Good guys, Calvin, Coaching Company in New Zealand. I did a little video the other day about a man who wasn't sure where his timing was doing, his ignition timing, on his G4X Monsoon. And I showed that how it goes from the timing settings, or where you calibrate your timing, and then it defaults back to the, uh, the base timing map, or the main ignition table. I asked the man, after I've sent him the profile, to get in and to send me some logging. We're going to go back in and, and have a bit of a look and see what else is going on, because there's something in there that's quite interesting that is going to catch people out. And they're going to be scratching their heads, they're going to be calling tech support, and maybe we'll take some pressure off those guys and show how to solve this issue and, and, and how to, to, to diagnose or to check it using logging. Now, I, I do a lot of logging. I use it on the cars that I finish and, and the conversions that I do when I do a 1UZ. I also do it on um, V8 sprint boats. And that's kind of my introduction. That was my introduction to logging and how to do it, what to do with it. And it's developed from there. I always enjoyed numbers, and I enjoy solving problems. So, well, sometimes, you know. So you kind of get the best of both worlds when you're working with a V8 sprint boat. You get to do logging and solve problems. Try to keep them alive so you can get to the end of the racing. Um, to finish first, you have to first finish. And to try and catch those issues before they really show up. One example I had just the other day, um, I was working on a vehicle here, and it was showing 15,000 RPM trigger inputs. And I worked my way through it to solve the issue. Instead of just diving in and testing on the vehicle, I went through the data, checked the logging, ran some tests, and I was able to solve it quite conclusively before I even laid a spanner on the car or got on there with my side cutters. And it allowed me to pinpoint the, the issue. That could have taken hours to solve. But logging is available to everyone, you know, and be able to use it even in the base model type ECUs like this little monsoon that this man is using. So let's jump into this, let's have a look at it, see what comes up. So I've downloaded a copy of his log and I've got in and I've run through and had a bit of a look at it and I've also got his tune profile in front of me today. So this is the ignition timing table. And we'll go along and we'll look at the logging. We're going to look at just the basic logging. Um, I haven't altered this one. This is like the default settings. Um, and if we go down here, this is the section that we're working on. And, and in his email, he suggested that the timing was possibly about 20 degrees advanced. So let's have a look at what the, the timing actually is. Um, and then we can make a decision of whether it's a problem or not. So looking at, at this screen here, um, we've got, and I'll actually, I'm going to expand it out. There's about eight minutes. You can see here we've got about eight minutes of information. So we get right out there. And I'm going to go right along here, and I'm just, I'm just going to hold my arrow button down. We can see we've got some a little bit of temperature. This is the temperature as it warms up. Um, we've got an engine speed up in here, which you can see there it's very low, and then it was increased through this zone here. This is a run of the the whole eight minutes, and and we were working at different times. And I, I don't actually know why there's at the bottom of the screen here. We've got this air temp thing happening, but you'll see something happens at 6 minutes 40 and it goes to 30 degrees. Hmm, 30 degrees. Interesting. Uh, so let's have a look. I'm just going to hold my arrow button down, my side arrow, and I'm, I'm going to look up in here. And what I might do is I might just pop a, a screen up here. There's a logging. We might put a big digital... What do we got here? I oh, know we do it. A... 
I'm just going to see if I can get the information that I want in here. So I'm just, I just want to do. A log list of ignition timing. I'm just going to see if I can make it as big as I can. It's not going to give me what I want. We're just going to keep an eye on this. We're going to keep an eye on, on what this timing figure is. So we start off right at the very beginning. We're, we're 10 degrees. I'm just going to start ticking along. We go down here. We tick, push that box there. And I'm just using my arrow button. And it's bringing up what the ignition timing is. There it is. And you'll see it's in this it's not really changing it's sitting at 30. we get to this point here where it was the, the revs were increased and you see it changes to 20 odd degrees so the timing is changing in that zone there and then it's going back to 30 degrees we've identified that there's something up with the timing so very quickly we can see hey the timing isn't where we'd expect it to be if we look back at the tuning map here's our ignition table we'd expect it at idle to be 17 to 20 degrees not at 30 so something else is referencing or changing where that timing is I'm a little bit familiar with the timing settings so I popped in and I looked whether there was a 4D table or a 5D table. There were none. I looked if there were any um, coolant temperature trims or any idle air trims. There are none. So I haven't put the, that data into this, this logging that I've just called it timing. And I've gathered the information that I thought was most relevant <coughs> to the timing. Without all that extra stuff at this stage. That extra stuff's getting logged, but I didn't think it was an issue. I checked water temp, I checked air temps, and as I said, there were no trims for that. But let's look at what's happening in here. We can see that the main point of interest is, is in here. So something happens just there and just there that changes the timing from right at the top here, 30 degrees, to something more normal, and then back to 30 degrees. And it seems to correlate with, here's our TPS at the bottom, being very, very low, very, very low. So it's something to do with the change of revs. We've also, in here, I haven't put RPM in the main sort of logging. I'm, I'm running off the navigator at the bottom. And we will see that, it correlates with a change in engine speed as well. So we can see right here, I've got the ignition table is active. So the whole time the ignition table is active. So it's referencing off that main ignition table. Supposedly, it's it's the one that the computer is choosing. There's a little bit more to it than that. We've got the, the dwell. And you see the dwell, there's something happening in that area as well. And then I've got this one here, idle ignition angle. And you see that's, that's at 30 degrees. So that's at 30, and up there is at 30. As we come closer, oh, I've got to stop doing that. We bring it up, so we get nice and close. I'm just using my arrow buttons here. And we go, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to use my up arrow. So I'm pushing the up arrow to expand this out. And we see here, right to the spot, doing it again. As we come along, and as that TPS comes up, you see it's at 2.5. We're still at 30. 
We come along a little bit more, then it drops at 2.6. We bring it along, 2.7 on the TPS. Um, and it kind of has a little bit of an uppy downy thing happening. That is not going to be pleasant to drive. And you're going to feel that. The timing jumping from 30 to 9 to minus. Oh, there's a minus 5. Look at that. So that isn't going to be pleasant. And the idle ignition table there is at minus, minus 5. So those two seem to match. Back to 30. Seems to match. Somewhere in here suddenly, yeah, idle ignition. So it kind of points to it's not actually referencing off the ignition table at this point. It's on that idle ignition table. And then it drops to a normal type figure. 20.5. So it's on the main table at this point in time. And it travels along and it stays there in course until that TPS drops. So the TPS climbs, climbs up, and the timing is certainly more normal at that time. So we deduce that it's something to do with this idle ignition angle. That's to do with idle speed control. Correlates to a change in RPM. I've actually taken the time to whip up an idle control set of logs. Now, I'm not sure what idle speed this vehicle has. Is this, this vehicle's on the other side of the world. I'm hoping it's got a two-wire idle speed control unit, so we can look at that. So we look at the status at the bottom. Idle ignition status is maximum ignition. So at this point, the idle, the ignition idle table has got the most idle, oh, the most ignition in to try and get that idle speed up because... It's only at 589 RPM there, 590. So it's trying to get it back up to this target right here of 11, oh, no, 1050. The idle stepper is in open loop. So it's not actually adjusting. It's not trying to bring that idle speed up at all. It's locked at an idle position of 25. Locked out. So that's not trying to adjust to bring that idle speed up to reach the target because there's a massive error in target so the ECU is giving it extra ignition to do so. That's all what's happening. The, the, the ECU isn't actually referencing at this point off the main ignition table. It's gone to the idle ignition area. I'll just bring this back down. So what happens? Just on this point here you can see the idle status will drop to RPM lockout because the idle speed or the engine speed is above the idle target. It said there's no no RPM anymore and the idle ignition status is locked out. It's, it's not referencing. So at that point it's running off the correct table and the timing has dropped. If we click back here into timing you can see that's where the change is. These, these maps are see they're in the same point between there and there so we're back into normal type timing so what's that idle ignition table so we go over to here now there's a couple of things you could do you could go up to the help form you could go um, right there and we could go uh, for the search we could search idle Ignition timing. Look at that. And there's an idle ignition heading. Click on that and it tells us a little bit about it. I'm just going to click back into there. Or we can go and reference it off the configuration screen. So I've gone down the side, gone to idle speed control setup. And at the top here, we've got idle ignition control. I've actually already turned it off. It was on. So if I put it back there, it goes to, no, don't, 
on I'm going to turn it off just for a moment So here's the idle ignition target. You can see here's our 30 degrees. That was the max clamp it was giving us in the, in here, if I go in here, max ignition. So if we go to there, there it is, max ignition, 30 degrees. That's why it's giving us that 30 degrees. Remember it was bouncing around just in that midpoint as the idle speed was coming up? or the engine speed was coming up well that at that point it was actually trying to, to drop the the timing to drop the idle speed because we'd open the throttle and it was still going into hey i'm trying to control that ignition that idle ignition timing so it was dropping to minus five that's where we saw that yeah i want to get rid of that see you later so that's what it was doing it was trying to control that timing via the idle ignition control. I've come in here in the configuration heading because, again, here's some information right here. There's actually a warning straight away. This function is for experienced tuners only and requires knowledge of closed loop control systems. That's what it was trying to do. In this situation, there's some other things that need to be set up first. It needs to have the base idle set properly. It needs to have the base settings for the idle control down in here, the target set and the base idle position set correctly. I've got other videos on how to do that. Um, so the easiest thing for this man to do is to simply turn the idle ignition control off. And if he does that, his timing should go back to something more normal. So that's the solution at this stage to turn it off, sort the other stuff out, work through developing the tune, and then turn that back on and, and understand how that works. For me, that's going to be another day when I've actually got a vehicle that's running and I can show the functions of that. A couple of other things to note. Um, at some point, there's a fault code for analog temperature 2, the air temp. We saw that in the logging. Uh, we're logging right here. There's this one down here. We're all... I'm going to stop doing that, don't I? We're all of a sudden at... There we go. Six minutes 40, something happened. It may have been unplugged. I don't know. But that needs to be looked at. And I don't believe we've got any Lambda going yet. So there's a limit to what we can do until that Lambda, lambda sensor is working, up and working. As I said, it's really cool that we can get this logging and use this logging to solve problems. In this case, I'm not going to send a profile back. I'm confident the man can just turn his idle ignition control off and continue. Next time when he works on it, though, I would, of course, I like a copy of the profile and I like a copy of the logging that he'll do. So I hope that's been helpful. I hope that's solved a few things for guys. It's very easy to get caught out on this one. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.